Hello and welcome to the MAC weather page for this Monday, August 10th. And you can see temperatures out there this morning, mid to upper 60s across the area. Very warm, muggy conditions. We got dew points in the mid to upper 60s, so you can tell we've got plenty of showers across the area here in central Michigan. Not a lot of rainfall, but certainly uh, many areas picking up on some rain, and that'll continue to move off to the east as a very slow moving cold front and low pressure will come across Wisconsin into the state today. That should allow at least scattered showers and maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms to occur into uh, early evening before that activity moves out of the area. You can see for uh, the area, our normal high is 80, normal low of 56. So we're starting to now drop temperatures a little bit as we head towards fall. But back on this day uh, in 2012, three years ago, we picked up 3.48 inches of rain here in Breckenridge for a very wet day. If we uh, look at a wider view of the Great Lakes, you can see the warm temperatures all the way through much of the Great Lakes uh, with 60s even into the UP. Notice out ahead of this uh, low pressure system, we got winds basically out of the south, southeast to the north, a little bit of an easterly component. And behind the slow, you can see our winds are out of the northwest to uh, north. And uh, there won't be a big temperature drop with this system, mainly in the mid 70s for Tuesday and Wednesday with lots of sunshine, but it'll be more noticeably dry with lower humidity and dew points moving into the area. If we take a look at a live view of Gaylord, you can see some showers up there this morning as well. And if we look at the current or the forecast map at 1 o'clock today, that front will be cutting through the uh, eastern part of the Michigan. And with that low pressure system moving off to the east, that'll take the rain with it as we get towards tonight. And again, especially tomorrow, could have a leftover shower across far eastern areas early tomorrow morning. But I think conditions will prove. So we should see lots in the way of sunshine, I think, uh, once Tuesday moves on into uh, Wednesday, even Thursday when we uh, will see a, a shift of our winds around to the south and it'll bring a little bit warmer temperatures again for tomorrow and Wednesday highs mainly in the mid to upper 70s I think maybe low 80s by Thursday and it looks like from uh, Friday on we'll have temperatures in the 80s all weekend into early next week our next uh, best chance of some showers or thunder showers will be for Thursday night into early Friday but right now that doesn't look like a big deal if we look at the uh, forecast precipitation from the WPC, this is over the next 24 hours, and this is when the bulk of the rain we expect over the next seven days to fall. You can see some areas picking up between half inch and three quarters an inch, much of the area a quarter to a half inch, as it looks right now. And if we look at the extended forecast, here's the six to 10 day outlook calling for a ridge to begin to develop across the eastern part of the state or the uh, nation and uh, troughing developing out west. And that will, uh, in the short term, keep us a little bit on the dry side as we expect this next air mass to extend into that six, seven, eight day period. But then I think we'll see in conditions uh, get a little bit more moist and warm once we get beyond that. And if we go to the 8 to 14 day outlook, you can see a, a well-established upper ridge. This is almost looking like a somewhat semi kind of sort of omega block developing. And that, that kind of a pattern can allow for a little bit more in a wave extended period of uh, warm temperatures across the area and cool out west. We'll see if that develops. But again, this looks like it could be the beginning of our uh, warming trend we expected for the end of August and to start September when I think we could get quite warm and we should pile on some pretty good growing degree days. And with that warm air in place, northern systems will cr crash into that every so often, bringing us a decent chance of showers and thunderstorms. And again, I think we'll become a little more active later next week. If we look at, uh, speaking of growing degree days, you can see uh, for Blissfield, uh, they're ahead of last year's pace, and so they're in pretty good shape. If we look at the Breckenridge area, well ahead of uh, last year's pace as well, a little below normal still, and we expect that trend to continue, and I think eventually we'll uh, uh, climb ahead of those other years by quite a bit. And these are some of the colder years that we've had over the last uh, decade or so. And if we look at uh, Brown City, also in great shape. In fact, they're ahead of 2013 pace, so uh, really good shape out in Brown City. And you can see uh, kind of interesting here, the soil temperatures at the 2-inch mark. You can see the uh, response to uh, sunny days and clear nights, uh, quite a big spread. And then you can see we had a very cloudy Saturday and half the first half of Sunday. You can see those temperatures didn't go anyplace. And then Sunday afternoon, the sun popped out, and you can see a nice response to that. Kind of interesting. And if we look at the uh, soil temperatures at the two-inch range, they were climbing here through much of next week. And a great, uh, this is a great range to be in. You can see that little bit of rain we had uh, in the response to that. And also this morning, another plateau probably drop a little bit as I think we'll get a little bit more in a way of rainfall than we did on Sunday. And if we look at the uh, next map, you can see uh, the light green. This is precipitation for Breckenridge here this year versus some of the other years. 
Uh, again, this year is in light green. Uh, yellow is last year, and the white is the normal. And you can see uh, last year and this year, El Nino years, which are quite often uh, pretty moist to growing degree or growing seasons as far as moisture goes. But uh, and that's not always the case. But uh, generally, when you have an El Nino season, the bread basket corn belt up into the Great Lakes usually does quite well moisture wise. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day, a great work week, and 73s to all.